Hello there and welcome back. So it's Wednesday, this means it's live coding time on the Code Wrinkles channel. For those of you who are probably a little bit newer, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Theoretically you should even see a very cool notification there. Now I I think that I have forgot to actually update my goals actually for this month so well just a second i will very very quickly do that in the meantime if you could just if you could just take a few seconds and say hello that would be that would be great and maybe where are you watching from cool let's see here How's everybody? How are things going? Okay. Can you hear me well enough? So is it okay? So, 
see exactly if anybody has typed anything here just a few more clicks and I'm ready with this well now it's started so this one is okay let me also check the members one And then we should be good to go. So what what do you think about the idea of creating a chess application like switching a little bit from just a pure API to something else that kind of like will have probably also for sure it has also some UI. Um that would be the term Okay, with the members we are okay, so it's the correct count for them. Cool. So if you subscribe to this channel, basically one nice thing that will happen is that you will see an on-screen notification thanking you in a very, very nice and animated way that you have joined the stream and subscribed to this channel. And that's, well, an interactive way for me to say a big thank you for, for all of you. Um, Okay, so are you gonna use something like SignalR for it for the for the games? I don't think because I say I said that we kind of like I guess I will use Blazor Server, and if I use Blazor Server, kind of like there won't be the need for a SignalR connection because basically in Blazor in Blazor Server, everything is rendered server side, so I have access to basically everything on the server, so a SignalR connection wouldn't kind of like make sense. There are quite a few reasons why I generally, uh, why I generally tend to actually go more towards the Blazor server application types is especially this because everything is rendered on the server, so kind of like um, the app will be on WPF. No, it will be a Blazor. It will be a web application using Blazor, and maybe probably will need a browser here for some other things. Because I'll probably have to also research a little bit on, for instance, teams and things like that. But what we kind of like want to do is build something very similar to a clone, like for leeches.org. You can basically, well, click on it and I would get paired with somebody and uh, I would have to play a game. I won't play this game right now, probably. It doesn't make sense. It's a coding stream, not a chess stream. <laughs> so I don't think that, that many of you would be interested, but the idea is then... Uh, when I get paired with somebody, I should, well, get the board, get the pieces, and I should be able to kind of, like, move around. And also, of course, making only legal moves. So that's uh, that's kind of, like, what we want to, to achieve uh, right now. Probably that's something, not, not something that we will finish during this stream today, but probably the next two or three streams will continue with this chess application until we have this basic functionality going. And then... I promised you I'll go to React, so that's kind of like one step towards going to React because, well, I haven't touched frontend in quite a bit, and I, I said, okay, let, let's start with something that at least I'm a bit familiar with. So, yeah, that's and for the UI in Blazor, basically, uh, we use a library that's called Mud Blazor, and that's kind of like what we'll try to use in our app. Kind of like it will make things a little bit easier and not spend so much time on um on uh, are the prerequisites but i want the dark team let me go to the dark team uh, okay so the installation the get the getting started so with this i'm guess i'm already familiar with a code okay JetBrains rider yes they recommend it cool i'm i'm happy with that okay so yeah that's that's what we'll use basically so we need to install uh the mod no not the template hmm ah no no i don't want the template i just want uh i just want to install the package and then yeah we'll kind of like figure out from there like we have to kind of like place these things we'll follow actually this documentation probably just to make sure that everything's okay 
And then we have the documentation here, which where you can find basically everything about the different components that they have. I know that they have grids, they have different type of, of uh, menus, context menus, basically everything that we'll probably need. So that's that's what we'll use for, for the front end part itself and hope to get it a little bit easier or to, to get it to work. Now for the chess part, because that's where the interesting part is. If I would be to write a chess engine and render the board, that would probably take me a lot of time. So we will rely on something that already is very widely adopted by most of the major chess platforms, like even Lee Chess, which is a JavaScript library that's called ChessJS. And there's another library that's called chessboard.js. So combined, we can use those two libraries to actually kind of like get the entire board and, uh, and the rules and, and everything working. So we'll just use that for now. And uh, this means that we'll also have to play around with JavaScript interoper interoperability because we will need to be able to call some JavaScript functions from our Blazor and we'll also need to be able to call some .NET methods from our JavaScript to be able to, to communicate. So that, that's kind of like nice because we need to use that one. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go over back to Writer and uh, kind of like, uh, yeah, let's start, let's, let's get started. Um, Okay, I see here. Can you please use Ant Blazer? Okay, why do you prefer Ant Blazer? I I don't know. I mean, I I wouldn't really like to to use on the live stream something that I really never touched. So I'm not sure about that. Actually. Quite, I guess it was a year back when I evaluated some some Blazor component libraries. I guess if I did think really that Matt Blazor kind of like was was a little bit better from the functionality that provided that it provided. So yeah, I guess we'll still go with with Matt Blazor. Okay, well, just one other thing is uh, please be proactive here in the chat. Please ask questions. This is why I'm doing this live live coding sessions I really like to get in touch with people I like people to ask questions and you can really ask me anything like it's also in the title of the stream and uh, yeah I really enjoy having chats here and kind of like get to know you better that's uh Ant Blazor is more beautiful and fully functional for enterprise app yeah but Mud Blazor is also fully functional I miss I mean we even used it in in a production application Hello Code Wrinkles, hello everyone, first time here, I like the chess and I like Blazor, so I know I'm gonna enjoy this life. Cool, that, that's kind of nice to hear. I also like Blazor and I also like chess, though I'm not too good at it. Feel also free to subscribe if you didn't subscribe already. I'm, I'm curious really for, for the first subscriber because I'm really keen to see the, the notification pop-up that, that comes in on the screen, so because it also has a nice animation, so everybody will, will acknowledge and we'll thank you for for subscribing and of course the same goes if you join the membership or if you join as a member or if you just use a super thanks or super sticker to to kind of like donate and support the stream there will also be a notification like thanking you for for your support cool now the first thing that we still need to do is let me just set up once again the project structure so that's i guess the first thing that we need uh let's start with some class libraries I guess we'll still go for the clean architecture part. Uh, so we'll have the application will be called Chess Wrinkles, by the way. Dot domain. That will be the first one. And why does it take so long? Okay, now they appear here red because I need to add everything to, to Git, but um, I just want to add all the projects and all the files and then I will kind of like add everything. Uh, let me just delete this class one. 
but I said we will not spend a lot of time on actually just creating the domain model and everything we'll just create what we need and then also implement functionality so that's that's actually what we do uh, what we'll do and first and foremost probably we will want to actually get uh, get the chessboard rendered and then actually think about anything else so then the ne next project that I will use here is okay the sprinkles dot mm. Okay, so we just have a new subscriber. Thank you very much. Yuhu, I guess. Thank you very much for subscribing. You're really welcome here. Feel like home. So it would be the data access layer, probably. I usually like to split my infrastructure layer in two different projects. Uh, Yashar. Hi, Yashar, you, you weren't a subscriber. Sorry. Okay, thank you for subscribing. Really appreciate that. Okay, so then uh, what I said, I really like to split my my infrastructure layer usually in two projects, like the data access layer, because that that one kind of like we will will grow a lot usually, and then this infra the other infrastructure, let's say project that will kind of like have things that are really infrastructure besides database, like if I have to send emails, if I have to use blob storages or whatever. If I have if I have to integrate with some external systems. That will all be placed in, in that infrastructure project. So that's why I will call this. But I don't know. To make it clear, let's make it like this. Infrastructure. Because that's what it would probably look like in my applications. Although right now probably we will not have a real like the other infrastructure part of, of the layer. Because yeah, probably we will not send emails right now. But when we'll have to, we'll be able to kind of like add that. So let's uh, delete this. Cool, I see more people joined. After the development of uh, the project, we will arrange a championship. <laughs> uh, yeah, on this application. Yeah, we are, I, I'll publish it somewhere and then we will play there. Haha, <laughs> you unsubscribe and subscribe back to see the animation. <laughs> uh, that's cool, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so let me go to the other one. We'll still need an application layer and um, here probably we'll, we'll still use um, mediator at a certain point because for each action that we'll have to kind of like trigger in the application there will be a corresponding handler. So each action that we trigger in the application, no matter in which component or, or how it's done, it's either a query or a command like and we'll have only one handler for that. That's a very good way to keep your Blazor applications safe. Because otherwise it will get messy if you start to reduce code a lot. Uh, so chess wrinkles dot application. That would be the next one. Let's delete this. Okay. And then, last but not least, add new project, ASP.NET Core. Chesswrinkles.app, SDK, Blazor server, so that's what we want to use. And we'll also tune, turn on individual authentication. Uh, we won't really care a lot about the authentication and we'll live with the default Microsoft ASP Donor Core identity like for the login page and registration page and, and so on and so forth but we will need kind of like this login in order to be able kind of like to well create a player and define who who exactly wants to play but we'll keep the concept of the identity like when you register and the concept of player we'll keep them separately like identity user is the concern of the identity part and the player is a concept of, is kind of like a concept of, of our domain so of course the player will contain a reference to, to the identity because we need kind of like a way to define which player to kind of like which identity it belongs. Cool. So we'll have this once again chess wrinkles app on 7.0 blazer server with individual authentication. So I guess that should be okay. Cool. That will already add um, the authentication functionality. If I remember correctly, it uses it uses um, 
an SQLite database that's kind of like part of the template, but we'll go on and kind of like use our own our own implementation for that. Cool. Now for the app itself, here we have a lot of files here. Now let me go here in commit. Uh, okay, I changed the solution, of course, I need to add this. Now that will be fun, because I have a lot of... I just want to add everything. This one, I... I want you... I want you add the SQL... Is SQLite database because that's what we will however delete uh, but then we have bootstrap so we kind of like need editor config no error says html web icon okay fetch data I'm not sure exactly what these files are some licenses okay Let's add them also. Index layout.xml. These are kind of like XML files. To be honest, I'm not sure if we need them or not. Launch settings would be useful. Uh, logging display. Yeah, let's add everything here. Main layout. CSS. Yeah, all the CSS files that we need. Okay, what are these? Open icons, I guess they are still needed for. Probably they are still needed. A okay, program, let's. I don't know, at the readme. This will need also. Mm, I guess we don't need this and this, but then we'll need this. Okay. Just commit this and now everything should be once again, like, it shouldn't be red anymore. I go back here. Except this app DB, which of course we haven't added, meant we can kind of like already delete it because we won't use that. Well, what I have also done in advance, I have created a database. So let me just add the connection string in app settings to JSON. So it should be like this. Yes. That should be an object. I usually call them default. Okay, and that's the database that we'll use. It's a local database. What's the problem with this one? It contains duplicate keys. Ah, there is already. Okay, I didn't I didn't see that. Probably it's from the template because it had that SQLite database. Uh, so let me just copy this here. And then I'll just name it default and we should be good to go. Okay. Cool. So we are done with the app settings file for now. Let me just close that. Uh, cool. So. The first things that we kind of like need to do is, ah, uh, let me, I say that we need to kind of like render the chessboard. So we'll need a few things here. Um, why is this CSS separate? Okay. Um, let me open this, open in, open in Explorer. Okay, I'll bring it here and we need to go here because there are some things that we will need to add here but here I want to view list like this. Hi Boyan, I'm glad you joined the stream. Thank you very much. For the record, Boyan is a colleague of mine that I appreciate a lot actually. So thank you very much for joining. 
Cool. So, uh, as I said, now I have to kind of like browse a little bit my computer because I have those. So we need those uh, JS files with uh, with chess.js and chessport.js that should also include some pictures for the pieces. Uh, and I have to find it first, of course. So, in the meantime, just, uh, yeah, ask something, say something. Where is that project? Aha. Uh -huh. Let me move it to the other screen so that I can move it around a little bit with more ease. And for things to work, I have to, to maintain a certain order in that. So for the... Okay. So in CSS... Hmm. Strange that we don't have... So, I also have a CSS file for the chessboard.js, which would be this one. Okay. And then, now the images folder. I guess I can just copy it as it is, because we don't have an images folder right now. Or do we have one? No, we don't. Okay, then in the JS folder, I'm not sure exactly what we have. Uh, chess and chess board. Copy. Ah, but uh, no, no, I have to. Sorry, let me. It actually, let me do the following. I found another thing here. Let me delete those files. Yes. And let me add the entire JS folder from that other part here. Because what we have in this folder, I'll show you just in a few seconds. Um, actually, we'll see this in, in the editor. So now the files are added. Should be okay. Uh, now we I need to also omit those files. Okay, so mm, there will be a lot of files here. Okay, I'm sure there's a setting to kind of like automatically add external files, but I'm not sure exactly how to set it up. I will search for that. I promise. It usually as I don't really do a lot of stuff with front end. I actually never had this problem with Rider. Okay. So commit and static files. Let's commit this. Hmm. Chess failed. Ah, there's there's apparently some to do. Yeah, there is. But this means that it didn't really do the commit. Hmm. Oh, commit anyway. Probably I have some to-dos in the JavaScript file. Or even in the library files there might be some to-dos. Uh, so let me check. So, these are added. These are added. And in the CSS, we have this chessboard which is also added. Which is okay. Let me see what's here. Uh, do you prefer JetBrains Rider over Visual Studio? If yes, why? Yes, I totally prefer JetBrains Rider over Visual Studio. Uh, the first and very important thing is that it's much faster. So once you try it out and you compare them, it's it's very hard to go back to Visual Studio. Then it, it has a lot of more tooling and uh, well features that you in Visual Studio get only with the Enterprise version, which is very, very expensive. And I get really a lot of powerful tools here in JetBrains uh, only for $14 a month or something like that. 
Okay, I got it from NPM. Uh, I got the chest from NPM. Chess JS and chessboard. I yeah. <laughs> I really didn't think about that, but yes. Uh, just just started learning Blazor. Interesting project. Thanks for doing live. Thank you very much, Abel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you if you didn't subscribe already, so that you are up to date whenever we do something new. Because I really try to be fairly active here. Like at least two videos per week, at least one live stream per week. And uh, yeah, you don't want to miss out, so make sure make sure to subscribe. You'll also get a very nice on-screen notification for everybody that subscribes, that joins the membership or that donates. Everybody gets gets a shout out with an animated thing on the screen. Cool. So now that we have those two things there, I guess there is one other thing that I would like to try out. Uh, I still have to look. I have on this other screen um, some something else opened. Uh, where I, as I said, I have also kind of like tried a longer time ago when actually Blazor were, was not even in, well, it was not globally available, it was just, it, it was just in beta, I guess, so it was not released. I, I did kind of like a, a library that's called uh, Chess Components or something like that, or Blazor Chess, or I don't know. But kind of like I didn't really maintain the library. Because if you want to make a library that kind of like will use front-end stuff then you also have to maintain it and also make it uh, well kind of um, offer a lot of features like customizing colors and sizes and it's really not something that I that I really like cool so let me where is that Hmm, so I have here the razor file. You know what, let me... Just add here a new directory and uh, let's call this um, chessboard. And here let's add a um, class or interface. No, actually not the class. What am I talking here? Uh, let's add a new folder. Should I add a folder or no? Hmm. Yeah, let's add a com com component directly. Uh, yeah, we want a chessboard. Cool. And if you have the chessboard, we also have the title here. Okay, what happens here? Yes, I want to add this file. Yes. Please add it. Cool. And now. What I need to do here, I just want to kind of like see how the board rendering actually works here. Uh, so we have a div. Uh, let's make this a row. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Class row. Then what actually did we... I guess we need a new div. Actually, the first time that I'm writing HTML in Rider, so I'm not 100% familiar with how this works in Rider. Um, let's make it a class. We already have Bootstrap here, so yeah, let's make a column that uh, that will contain the entire row, and then under div. And in this div, as far as I recall, hmm. I guess we give need to give it an ID. 
And the ID should be, I guess, a board because it's in the JS kind, kind of like they rely on this ID. And uh, yeah, let's see the style here and say that we want to be uh, with, let's make it 80%. Uh, where's the percent sign? Not there. Like that. Cool. And theoretically, ah, we need to add the, the JavaScript files, of course. We need to add, add the JavaScript files. Now, I guess we need to do this. Let me check. Where should we do this? I guess in the layout. Hmm. What do we have in the main layout right now? Uh, no, this is not in the main layout. Then uh, in app.razor. No, also not here. Uh, to the term, where else could it be? Survey imports no this is these are only the imports i'm ah, in pages not in index in hosts here in hosts yeah that's that's kind of like we need because here we have all these scripts like the script for the blazer to work and i guess i should have the imports for this already so let me let me just find it the host cshtml Why do I have a warning here? Missing required title element. Okay. Yeah, we'll add this. Don't really care about that right now. Um, okay. That should actually add our scripts, I guess. So that should be okay. Now, the only thing that I'm not sure exactly is how it will work out with... Um, but, ah, okay, I guess we still won't be able to start the application because right now if we start the application, um, subscribe, but it doesn't show up in the animation. When did you subscribe? Before I started the stream or during the stream? Because... At least one person subscribed and we did see the animation. If you subscribe before I went live, then uh, yeah, the animation uh, didn't show. Okay. So before we actually can get to try this out and see if everything works or what it doesn't work and try to fix that, I guess we still have some problems here because um, it already has kind of like this identity stuff and I'm not sure 100% exactly how that is wired up right now. Of course they use SQLite and they add all the stores here. Uh, but you know what? I don't know. Let me, let me just give it a run. Ah, uh, but no, because I want to, yeah. I need to also add first the... Um, the chessboard of course to to something so yeah even if the application runs right now it kind of like doesn't really do much because right now i don't want to log in so hopefully i don't know maybe it will work yeah no it doesn't work because yeah because it yeah because it tries to connect to the database okay uh yeah, I got that. You can use also Emmet extension to simplify writing HTML tags. I will try that out. Okay, let me let me check here. So we want to kind of like comment out a lot a bunch of stuff here. Like this, we need this one, we need this one, okay, and I guess, and singleton, it's 
subscribe after the live started. Okay, that's um, strange. Let me test it out once again. Okay, where do I have this? Uh, cool. It should appear. I'm really not sure why. Like I've tested with the don with the don donation right now. So yeah, that was kind of like a test donation. So it works. I'm trying it out also with a subscriber, but it... Yeah, it works. I don't know. I, I don't really exactly know what happened here. But uh, yeah. Let's see if um, we have other people that maybe subscribed. In the meantime, mm, no. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's then continue. Okay, so we have commented out the things that we kind of like didn't need, and uh, right now I guess there shouldn't be any connection to the database at all. Um, let me let me run this. So unless we navigate to the login and to the register page, I guess we should be covered. Okay, something happens here. Ah, it actually did open here. Let me... But I, I forgot... I forgot to add the chessboard. Ah, that's not nice. So let me go on the index. Here, instead of this survey, let's have. Sources apply changes. Okay, something doesn't really like something here. Ah, probably I left to import this somewhere. Okay. Basically, it doesn't really know right now that I'm that I'm having here. So let me go to the imports, I guess. Ah, uh, to the thumb. Using this wrinkles dot app dot chessboard. Okay. Let's go back to the index. Yes, now it works. Now it works. Okay, so let's see if we can get the board rendered. By the way, thank you all for joining. And uh, as I said, if if you like this type of content, uh, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. Okay, let me bring it to this other screen. Actually, yeah, chessboard and uh, yeah, I have the title of the component, but then kind of like things are not that well. But here we don't even have an error on the console. Okay. So, what's the problem here? It simply doesn't render the component. Or it doesn't render the board. Uh, probably because... Probably because... Ah! I guess we, we have to kind of like run some JavaScript to create the board and things like that. Although... 
I did think, let, let me close this right now. I did think that we already have that. Let me close that. And I guess there, there's where we kind of like need the JavaScript inter interoperability. Hmm. Yep. There's where we kind of like need to do that. Uh, let me go here to the chessboard.racer and instead of adding things here in the code I always like to kind of like keep uh, keep things in separate files like the markup in one file and uh, the c-sharp code in another file and to do this kind of like I need to just create um, chessboard.razor.cs and it should be added automatically here and this also is a class uh, that needs to be partial okay and uh, no but why did it no it should also be chessboard like this um And I guess it should inherit component base probably, something like that. Okay, so now these two kind of like should belong together in this case. And this would also mean that what I can do right now for me is... Um, so one thing in Blazor is... When you need this JavaScript interoperability, we actually need to invoke this. Uh, sorry, to inject this. And one way to inject this is we can usually better to use the attribute for inject. And here, ijs runtime, I guess it should be called like this. Uh, let's call this js runtime. Uh, okay, and uh, I, I guess it should be kind of like a regular property here js runtime what's the problem with that non-nullable property okay Let's check here something <laughs> no, I don't want right now. Okay, so we have this IGS runtime. Um, how did we get the chessboard tag? Uh, so the chessboard tag in Blazor is we can create components like in Angular and like in React. And we can create a component by simply having kind of like a file that's called you give it a name. So I gave it the name chessboard and dot razor. Razor kind of like uh, shows that it's um, that it is a component. And in a component basically in this razor file you can just well that's a markup file. You can add your HTML here. And then in order to to this to be recognized basically in, in the entire place replication like a tag what we have done is we did come here to the imports and we added a using here to our chessboard and that's how we can actually use it um, as a component here or in the index we can use it like this but it's similar also in react and in angular when you create components you can then use those components as as tags like regular HTML tags. Sylvia C. Uh, which Blazor components did you use in production apps? I mean, we used the Mud Blazor library in one of the projects. And in other projects, I'm, I'm really not sure exactly. But there is also the thing that a lot of companies that, that we are working with usually have licenses like for a lot of UI stuff like at Sync Fusions, Kendo, um, Dev Express, or or others, and all of them 
also have blazer components so yeah i guess in in enterprise applications you would probably mostly use one of those components because the those are really big known companies or all almost all enterprises work with them when it comes to no matter if you do a regular web app, if you do React, if you do Angular, if you do WPF, those companies, they have components for everything, like for WPF, WinForms, um, MVC, Angular, React, Vue.js, everything. Like you have components for really all UI stuff that you might want. I guess even for, for some are in forms and also I guess for other. Okay. Cool, so I have explained, I guess, this part with, with the chessboard. Now, the only thing is, let me go back here. Yes, okay, we have invoked uh, this IJS runtime. And now, the thing is, uh, we have this file. Let me show you. Which is called Blazor Chess. Uh, that's a file that, that basically I have created for the other project, I said some time ago when I created the library. And there is this function render board, and actually this function renders a board. And it takes in a position, it takes in an orientation, and also a plane color. And then basically it creates new chest that's from the library. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it has functions for, okay, uh, what should happen when on drag start, like when you start to move a piece. Um, then maybe when you actually have moved a piece and placed it on a certain square, and kind of like it it it, ev it evaluates the, the position and uh, the outcome and uh, yeah, on snap and if the position for instance is not okay okay we do here lots of stuff and we do invoke async blazer authentication player moved okay yeah that's from the library that probably will fail uh, or we can just comment out this one right now because in this moment we will not need that uh, here's the initial configuration object it will take for the orientation uh, if the pieces are draggable for the position, the position is usually in fan format. Now, explaining fan format, it's uh, it's really hard for me to explain. <laughs> um, but I will show you how how fan looks like. It's kind of like a way to notate chess positions. Like if you if you have a a, a fan string, you can kind of like define exactly how that should be rendered uh, on the board or how how you should put the pieces on the board according to that fan string kind of like it takes uh basically it it contains eight um eight lines let's say and for each line it kind of like says what piece do you have on on each square if if you interpret that fan like in chess engines and chess applications fan notation is very important everything goes goes actually with uh, with the fan notation you can use mud drag with c-sharp and i uh, use the chess demo all in c-sharp uh, no i really will not start to rewrite all the chess thing in c-sharp if if it's already here um because this chess board and chess chess those are libraries basically that, that we are using they are javascript libraries um yeah and then there's other stuff here get game result get winner yeah okay so actually what we need to do is we need to invoke this render board actually so that's um that's what we need to do uh okay so actually what we need to do here in this case is we'll need to get a fan and the starting position as a fan notation Maybe if somebody has time, and those of you who said that are fam uh, familiar with chess, maybe you find a useful link and, and put it in, in the comments, like uh, what fan notation is. And if you want to briefly explain that, I would totally appreciate that. Um, okay, so we need to invoke this function here. So we need the, the fan position, the orientation, and the plain color. That's things that we can kind of like also hard code. Uh, so let me go back here in the components. So what we need to do is, and here's a very, very important trick. When you want to invoke JavaScript functions from .NET and also vice versa, the problem is that usually what, what people do is in Blazor, we have this, well, um, let's call them lifecycle methods. For instance, protected, um, override, 
let me also type correctly override uh, async task on initialized uh, async so that's uh, this one uh, lifecycle method uh, that kind of like lifecycle methods like in angular like also in react they kind of like give you a way to kind of like execute some code during specific stages of the life life cycle of a component and for instance on initialized async is the place where you actually execute code in the moment that the component is initialized and when the component is initialized what we mean by that when the component is actually or the constructor of this component because in the end this here or everything here it, it's actually just a class uh, it's it's compiled actually just a class you know, to a renderer tree actually so when the constructor is called then this is or after the constructor is called or within the constructor you have this one initialized async but then there are also other lifecycle methods like for instance on after render async um or i i don't recall all the others on parameter set uh this is for instance a method that gets calls right after the parameters were set like inject here uh this is injected but you can well, you will see that we'll have kind of like properties that are annotated with the attribute parameter and then the on after parameter set uh, lifecycle method kind of like is triggered after all the values for the parameters are set. And then you can once again validate those parameters and well, do the stuff that you would like to do or that you would need to do in the application. And usually the thing is that in Blazor, a lot of things you place actually here on the in on uh, initialized async like when you want to initialize values or whatever uh, or if you want to do some setup when the components get registered you, you kind of like do do it here and that's where kind of like this stuff usually uh, usually happens now the problem is with javascript for instance if we want to invoke from here a javascript function the moment that we kind of like try to register that code and it will try to kind of like make sure that the javascript function exists it will it, it will not see actually the javascript file because the javascript is not loaded yet so that's why it's very very important then when we want to use kind of like or well uh, invoke things uh, in javascript basically uh, within the component initialization process we need to actually do that at the end of the component initialization and it means then this would be the method that's called on after render async because this is actually hmm, why does it why did they change the name of this method in dotnet 7 Ah, I think, uh, no, I think it's with bool first render. I mean, it's eight months since I actually did this. This is uh, the line of text for place uh, placements at start of the chess game. Yes, it usually, it's it, it used for that. Now, uh, what we can do here is, for instance, we can say var fan equals, and I have copied this string. This is how a fan string looks like. Like that's that's the fan string for the initial position, and you see that kind of like it's on the first line. You have rook, knight, bishop, um, queen, king. Actually, that's for black then. A uh, bishop, knight, rook. Then on the next line you have pawn, 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 like eight pawns. And then basically what you have here is eight squares, eight squares, eight squares, eight squares. Then you have once again pawn, 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 pawn. And then you have actually once again rook knight um bishop queen king um bishop knight rook once again and then there are some notations for uh if the castling is available or not so i'm, I'm not exactly 100 percent sure about how this is interpreted but it's regarding castling and other um, other stuff that you could do if you have promoted a piece to something so that, that kind of like of information is within this part. Um, I guess that's, that's the color information for um, 
like who, who, who. ah this is the information of which color is the next to move which in this case is white because it's the initial position and then there's information about castling i guess here's king a king side uh, castling is still available queen side castling is still available available and then i'm not sure exactly about this stuff but that's actually a fan notation and and how how this is supposed uh, to work now if we have this uh, fan uh, rotation the only thing is now we need to give the color for playing color equals i don't know let's try it uh, white Okay. Okay, and I have also, I guess we need to provide an orientation. Um, now, I don't remember exactly what the orientation could be. But I mean, if we don't provide an orientation, I guess maybe it will render the board kind of like with random. And the playing color. Oh, let me let me check things again. Yeah, so the orientation can be either white or black, but then the color... Let's name this orientation and um, let's see if, um, if it works without that. And then what we can do here is we can do a null check on the JS runtime. So if I JS, no, it's called JS runtime. Um, I guess in .NET 7 we can say it like this. So if the JS runtime is not null, then await JS runtime dot invoke async. And then in the invoke async, what did it actually do here? So in this invoke async, let me close it correctly. We need to give uh, to give the name of the function that we want to run, which is render board. Uh, I guess it's like that. Then we need to provide the fan, and that's a string. Then the orientation. Let's provide orientation twice. Like, um, let's move this on a different line. Okay, orientation because it's white. Like the orientation and the color, it should be the same. Now, I, I think the orientation is because you want to know if you want to render the the board with the black pieces down if you play black, and um, if you or if you want to render the board as white, so with the white pieces down. Now, if, if you play black, for instance and this component is rendered you want to make want to have the orientation black uh, but then it could be that the playing color like the color that needs to do the next move is actually white so i guess but in this case those two are uh, do actually correspond i guess so we do this on after render async we call javascript and yeah let's let's try again let's try again So, is anybody still here? I guess we still have people here. Thank you very much for joining. By the way, guys, for those of you who are newer here, um, if you want to support this stream, one way to do it would be to subscribe, of course. Uh, that would be very, very important. And I will thank you very much. You can also join as a Codewinkles member. Members get, um, get a lot of nice perks, I would say. In addition to what we usually have in the Code Wrinkles channel, and here an error occurred, so we had an error. Let's let's check the error. 
Probably something with the JS runtime. Exceptional rendering component is not defined. <laughs> I love JavaScript. Okay. I guess we also need jQuery. And I guess we don't have jQuery. Uh, yeah, I guess that should be that should be the problem here. Um, I guess we also need the. Um, hmm. Let me go on the host here where we have some stuff. So we have here the style sheet or bootstrap. We have CSS. We have this uh, app size to CSS. If I can head outlet. Okay. Not really 100% familiar with this one, to be honest. And uh, then that's kind of like it. But then I guess we will also need to kind of like have the CSS for the board we don't have it so that's uh it's one thing that we need to have but then but, um, like uh, sure import jQuery CDN, I guess. Okay, but don't they have something like a link that I just can simply use? Oh, okay, we have it. So let's take this script tag and let's place it before the chessboard. That is script, HTTP, CDN, jQuery, integrity, I guess. Let's give it another try. Let's give it another try. So build was successful. Yes, it starts here. Aha. Uh -huh. So here we are. Here we have a board. Now it's fairly big, but we can ever we can even make moves. Uh, so let me let me just go back to the component. But I'm I'm happy, and instead. Instead of make it, uh, where did we do this here? Instead of making this 80%, let's make this uh, 400 pixel. Apply changes. I don't know, I hope changes are automatically applied, I guess. So theoretically, if we then shift F5, mm, it's still too big. I guess the changes were not important. Doesn't? Shouldn't we have hot, hot reload here, I guess? Hmm. Said it's been more than around 8 months since I last worked with Blazor. Uh, but now this should be... Okay, no, no, no. Okay, we have a typo here. Because it's wit. Okay, so probably this was the reason why it was not working correctly. So yeah, let's uh, let's open. But we have a chessboard, guys. Guys, we have a chessboard. I mean, that's already a major success. So that's already a major success from my point of view. We have a chessboard. Here it is. Yay! Chessboard, cool. Now, for instance, you can't you can't do illegal moves because that's why chess JS is actually is used as like like same rules for for all the chess moves that you do 
So basically you can just uh, do legal moves here. Let's go for an Italian game. Let's go for the fried liver attack. What's... I don't know, it's like this, like this. Mm. No, that's actually a mistake. That's, I don't have redo functionality, yes. Uh, that's something that we'll need to do here. But uh, yeah, so... Whatever, kind of like... You can even capture pieces. And yeah, everything kind of like looks good. Now white is totally, totally bad right now. So we have a working chessboard. That's the first thing that we needed here. Now from this point on, we just need kind of like to build everything around the chessboard. So we need users to register and uh, to register and to log in. Uh, we then need players. Like we need the concept of player, and we need to model that. We'll also then I don't know. I guess I mean, we will need the concept of game, like the game that should hold probably the current position, um, who the players were involved in, things like that. And all these things are things that we'll actually do afterwards. And I see right now actually that there is a very, very, very big delay um, from what I'm streaming to what it actually arrives to you. Like from the moment I do something until it kind of like it arrives to you, uh, it, it's a huge delay. I'm not even sure. I guess it's maybe two minutes or something like that. Whoa, that's huge. Or or maybe not. I don't know. Just say something. Yeah, because on the stream I guess I'm still playing and I'm actually ready with. Yeah, cool. But we have a chessboard, so. Um, I don't know what I was saying before we actually got this, but I, I guess I got interrupted. I would really appreciate, for instance, if you are here for the first time and if you like the content and you want to keep watching. And also, I have also lots of other videos that are that are already uploaded here, also on Blazor server, by the way. There, there are entire playlists of that. Just subscribe to this channel and make sure to hit also the notification bell button so that you are notified whenever there's some new action happening here. And... Um, if you want to go the extra mile and I would totally appreciate it and support this channel, uh, then just join our membership program. The Code Wrinkles member get access to some very cool stuff. Like for instance, members of Code Wrinkles from a certain level, they get access to the source code that we use in all the videos, in the live streams. They get access to uh, on-demand watching the recordings of, of the live streams that we have. Uh, and we have a Discord server. By the way, on the Discord server, there are really very, very nice discussions there like daily. I'm, I'm really impressed with that. Uh, so yeah, it, all members, really all members, uh, they can then join automatically our Discord community and we can talk there a lot. Like we talk about refactoring, about uh, things that, that well, uh, some members maybe encounter at work, but we talk a lot about also other stuff that's related to technology. Like we did talk a lot about OpenAI and chat GPT and uh, how this affects us developers and yeah there were some really nice discussions there so all members once again can um, join or automatically can join the discord server that's another very very nice benefit and even one-to-one -one, uh, mentoring pair programming or uh, how whatever you want to call them sessions so yeah if, if this kind of like sounds cool to you then yeah maybe just click the join button here and and take a look at what we have there and if you don't want to, to, to be a member, but if you really enjoyed what we have done so far on this stream, just uh, make a donation. You have those super tanks, super stickers, and uh, that would be highly appreciated. And that would also be, once again, theoretically, they, there should be an on-screen animation announcing that, um, that you have donated, and that would be highly appreciated. But we will not stop just yet. With the live stream today we will still continue uh to work on our application because right now as i said we need to kind of like start to think about modeling stuff a little bit like to to, to have some logic or to go towards some logic that uh well now it's the black player to move now it's the white player to move and uh, the black player that it should has a name it should have maybe i don't know a rating and things like that so we have to model that part uh, we'll also have to kind of like implement Mud Blazor and start to work against the UI. And I guess the very first thing that we need to do is wire up identity. So that's one thing that we will do. Uh, but I will really want to have a short break, uh, like five minutes, uh, five to seven minutes. And then I will be back 
and we'll continue to work towards our chess application but i'm really thrilled that we have a working chessboard right now so we have something that we can work with and we can build upon so yeah stay tuned please don't run away i'll be back as i said in five to seven minutes was a ship that put to sea the name of the ship was a billy or tea the wind blew harder bowed it down below me bully boy blow soon may the well of men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum one day when the sun is done we'll take our leave and go she'd not been to each from shore when down on her a right whale 
aboard. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale in tow. Soon may the whale of men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day with the tongue in his gun, we'll take our leave and go. Before the boat had hit the water, the whale's tail came up and caught her. All hands to the side, harpooned and fought her when she died down low. Soon may the whale of men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. No whale was freed, the captain's mind was not on greed, but he belonged to the whaleman's screech, he took that ship in tow. <gasps> Soon may the whale of men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day with the tongue in his gun, we'll take our leave and go. For forty days or even more, the line went slack and tight once more. Our boats were lost, there were only four, and still that whale did go. <gasps> Soon may the well of men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day with the tongue in his gun, we'll take our leave and go. As far as I've heard, the fight's still on. The line's not cut and the whale's not gone. The well of men makes his regular call to encourage the captain, crew, and all. Soon may the well of men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day with the tongue in his gun, we'll take our leave and go. Soon Think about when you run into a fire. So let them burn, let them burn it out. Or sell them to the rich and fire. They want to let the world decay. They tell us lies and it's fade away, fade away. And we feel betrayed. We Back. I see that some of you are still are still here. Thank you very much for holding by. Yeah, let me check if everything's okay. Uh, seems to be okay at least. Oh yeah. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. See, we have um, up here on the screen we have set some or I have set some goals for this month of of December. Uh, currently, well, even if the first one with the subscribers, it seems that it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe easy to, to achieve, but I start to think it's uh, not that easy anymore. But yeah, it would be highly appreciated if you can subscribe. And yeah, also help towards the membership goals if you if you want, that would be also highly appreciated. But yeah, let's uh, let's get started with, uh, with what we have here. Uh, let me just also switch back to this view here that I need okay cool so 
we have a working chessboard so that's that's a good thing that's a good first step but now is time to actually well focus on some part that's part of the back end because we we will need some some setup here to kind of like start to be able to work with this like um, i would like to set up identity first of all let me maybe clear everything here and um, in Blazor, we already have it configured with identity. So we have uh, Microsoft ASP Donor Core Identity. So we have the login pages and register pages. We'll probably need to scaffold, uh, I don't know, maybe the login and the register page so that we can actually edit them. Because the register page, I guess we would like to give some, or the users to give some more information. Like for instance, a f name, I don't know, maybe a city and a country. That would probably make sense, I guess. Um, so yeah, we'll have to start working on that. So let's take it then step by step. First of all, identity. If we're talking about identity, actually the only thing that we need is basically a DB context that inherits this identity identity DB context. So all the tables for Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity would be then created. So yeah, let me let me go back to this. Um, infrastructure stuff here um actually i have this data access layer and let's create here an interface no not interface class um and let's call this uh, chess wrinkles db context and that should inherit identity db context and yep I need to install a package, Microsoft ASP Dominant Core Identity Entity Framework Core version 7. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's install that. Okay. And now import the missing reference. Now, I hate that it's kind of like this um, typo. Hmm. Okay, rename to I don't want to rename add to user dictionary solution. Hmm. Let's I don't know this one. Because I don't want to kind of like change this every time. So yeah, that's um that's one thing to, to do. Okay, now uh identity B context uh and I guess we should be good to go i don't think that we need anything else um ah, we need the constructor of course okay so here we need the db context options okay um ah, okay we need to install entity framework but, um, okay let me let me go to Dependencies, manage NuGet packages. So, what will we need here? Microsoft dot entity frame or and let's see. I mean, for when we do the migrations. I guess so we'll need the core package for uh, this one version 7 install we will need I guess the SQL server because otherwise we will have a lot of errors in the migrations when we'll add migrations and I guess we'll also need the tools for the migrations so Yeah, tools. I guess it should be okay. I guess it should be okay. Cool. So now we have uh, all the packages that we need here. And now we should be able to... Oh, why add type? What's the problem? Ah, I guess I have a typo. DB context options. And uh, here let's... Send this to the base class, like that. And I guess for now, actually, that's everything that we need. 
except that for the domain let's also have this idea of a player because that kind of like when we register a new user like the identity will also need um, need um, mm, thinking about something right now no i guess we don't need to override the own configuring right now uh so yeah let's add a new class here no not class the domain add i want a folder first so let's have a directory and let's call a player and or should we should be more specific we have a chess player that's what we want to create uh sorry I, I guess I'm a little bit ahead probably uh, because this that's the folder so it would be models and in this folder I'll create a class chess player and class interface chess player something like that cool and chess player it should have kind of like have some things here um, Thinking a little bit right now. Hmm. I guess we'll want to have different time con time controls. Okay, so we have here a new member. Everybody will see it on the screen. Thank you very very much. For joining, I guess it was Boyan Pavlovich. Thank you very much for becoming a member. Really appreciate that. Well, um, so what? Uh, what's actually a chess player? Yes, I'm trying to make sense. Uh, what is dull? I see now the question, uh, Adrian. It's data access layer. It's a short for data access layer. Like it conceptually, it belongs to the infrastructure layer of the application, but I usually split it in two. Like the data access layer is only responsible for data access and nothing else. All the other infrastructure concerns, I place it. They I place them usually in a different solution. But uh, yeah, that's. Um, Usually, um, or uh, that's for now not the case for us in this application. Um, but if if you comment right now something, everybody will see that actually as a member you have a code wrinkles badge next to your name. I guess you can already see it in the chat, most of you probably. But uh, yeah, that's another nice stuff for members day. They are visible that they are members because they have that uh, that code wrinkles badge. Cool. So uh, yeah, what is actually this uh, chess player? So uh, public. Uh, of course, we need an identifier for the player, and yeah, let's make it GUID. Um, because why not? We hope that we'll have I don't know maybe more than two billion chess players on the application. Although that's probably not the case. Let's go back to int. Just player ID. Get set. Now then what we'll want to have is public string of uh, full name. Let's or should we have separate? Yeah, let's let's have it separated. Separated first name. Because there are some places where we might want to actually, I don't know, maybe just use the first name, like when we send maybe a notification or an email or something like that. We don't want the whole name. Of course, I have to also type in correctly string last name. Get set. For those of you who have might joined a little bit later, we already have a working chessboard component in Blazor, so. We're kind of like one step further and now we have started to kind of like work on the backend part 
that we need to be able to kind of like, well, implement the logic that we need in the application and kind of like be able to set up a game between two players. Uh, so first, to have players, they need to, to register. That's why we need ASP.NET Core Identity. And then we need this concept of, of a chess player. That kind of like, a, what, what does a chess player mean here? Okay. Then, what we'll have here is um, public string. Maybe they want to actually provide also a short description. Get set. Uh, also for this and now uh, very important in chess I'm not sure if all of you are familiar but is the idea of rating and the rating uh, in chess is well it's calculated based on a very very specific algorithm that's called an elo it's let me write it down it's like this and there are different types of of chess kind of like depending also on um, um on the time control like there is blitz in time controls like five minutes or something like that there's rapid chest and time control of 10 minutes there's even bullet which is time control with i don't know one minute um there's also then i don't know classical with higher time controls and basically the rating is calculated for each of the variants usually also in the international chess federation it's done the same like we have blitz you have rapid and then you have classical and ratings are kind of like calculated Per each um, per each variant, so kind of like we will have this also in our application. In this case, we kind of we need to to hold information about the current rating of the player, and the way that's calculated usually uh, results in a double, and we'll have then a blitz rating. Get set uh, public double rapid rating get set public double classical rating get set something like that okay i guess i'm not sure but i guess for hello thank you for joining url Sorry for not pronouncing your your username correctly. Where where are you watching from? Cool. So I guess that for now we should not overthink things. I guess to get us started, kind of like that. That's all what we need for a chess player. Like some piece of the very very basic information right now. Uh, cool. So we have the chess player. We have the DB context. Ah, we will need um, public and that would be string, I guess, because Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity uses strings, unfortunately, uh, not UID, and it would be identity ID, get set, and this should be not nullable, theoretically, but yeah, I cannot really enforce that, uh, so yeah. Because that's how we'll kind of like bind this chess player to the corresponding identity, like user in Microsoft ASP Donor Core Identity. I don't want to mix those concepts, I want to keep them separated. Um, cool. So, um, okay, let me let me just check. Uh, this is okay. Then we can go back to the data access layer. And what we'll also have here is a public db set of player that's i guess a typo here because it's written like that and player is in uh, it's chess player not player but still i need to import make a reference to this project like in the domain but it's okay we are in the data access layer we are allowed to do that so um let's just call it players here Okay, so now we have this DB set. In the identity DB context, we have the identity user and all the other stuff like roles uh, and whatever is still there in Microsoft ASP on the core identity. So theoretically, what we can do right now is we can uh, create a migration. And one of the 
one of the reasons I love I love Rider is because in Rider there is this extension Entity Framework Core, and it gives you some nice UI like this. First migration is initial migration project. I want to be a data access layer project, startup project, uh, app. Yep, that should be a startup project. The DP context is this one. The folder migrations will be created when we kind of like run it. And I guess that, um, I guess we theoretically should be good to go right now. By the way, uh, for those of you who have might watched uh, part of my stream on Saturday, for those um, of you who didn't, I kind of like did a stream eight hours long on Saturday. That was a little bit exhausting. And I see that um, as soon as I started to work more on the back end, a lot of people started to run away <laughs> from the viewers. So yeah, definitely people tend to enjoy more this part where we have the UI involved. But yeah, to get UI involved, we need to set up also the back end. And like we, we cannot really overcome that. Uh, okay, so something failed. Why is Entity Framework Tools version... Uh, okay. No, no, the problem is... I guess it's not here. The problem is not here, the problem is here. The problem is in this project, in the app. And by the way, we have to kind of like, uh, well, uncomment things that we have commented out. Uh, so, what we have here installed, installed. Uh, Microsoft SP, Donet Core, uh, okay. Identity Entity Framework Core. Framework Core SQLite, this is what we don't need anymore. But where is that project with the version 6.0.3? Because everything here is version 7. Let, let me double check in the data access layer. Did I install something? So this is version 7. This is version 7. This is version 7. This is version 7. And here Implicitly installed packages, all are version 7. Update the CLI tools. Hmm. To be honest, I don't exactly understand how or... Because the CLI tools should be part of some package, I guess. But here, all the packages should be the correct one. Or did we have here some option that I missed? Okay, EF core tools. Um, why is it like this? Because, hmm, kind of like I used this also in the previous stream and it worked. But I guess we were on 6.0. .0. Okay, cool. Now, um, To be honest, I, I don't think I know exactly how to update this. Um, doesn't this have... Nope. Uh, let me go to the terminals. .net EF. Um, Yeah, it's version 0 0.3, and then uh, I need to kind of like update. Update? Is this correct? No. Uh, for the project option, okay. I mean, we are here in the chess wrinkles. Mm. Let me first take a look into the folder structure that we have here. 
Okay, so it would be then update. How was the error? Uh, project. Project and it's the sprinkles dot infrastructure dot dal. and comments okay the comment um yeah let me just google it because i'm not i don't remember the comment for that uh, okay it's here like tools .NET tool install global.net EF okay but it's update global the tool using the following comment yeah let's let's try that out aha uh -huh. Okay, cool. Now it should work. Uh, no, boy, I didn't want to update the database. I wanted to update the version of the CLI because it was 6.0.3 and the problem was that all my other entity framework packages were version 7 and that's why I had initially an error. So I, did, I didn't want to update the database. I just wanted to update the CLI and which I did right now, it should be 7. So I guess we should be good to go right now. So if we go once again to tools um, and uh, Adrian, thank you very much, by the way, for the hint. Um, it's framework core, add migration, initial, once again, data access layer. Uh, but no, I can't do that because I have to uncomment things and set things up. Um, so let me let me go to the here. Because here we need to kind of like uncomment some stuff here. Like basically everything that we have here. Okay, use SQLite. Um, I guess we still need the package with SQL Server here because I think we don't have it. Uh, to the term for abstractions analyzer design relational. Uh, that's uh, installed on the term. SQL Server, that's what we need to install. Yes, I got it. I realized after I said it. Okay, yeah. Cool. So now this package is installed. Now, uh, builder connection string, get connection. Uh, yes, right now, the name that I have changed initially is. Um, Oh, this is null coalescing operator, how it's called, I never know how to pronounce that. Um, though it just throws an error. Okay. Cool. Uh, but then here is use SQL server. Cool. Add uh, database developer exception page. Okay. Add default identity, which should be the identity user. Sign in required confirmed account false. Actually, I guess there are some other things that I want to set up here. So, first of all, this is false. The default for Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity is that it kind of like wants me to, um, like, it should be capital letter non-capital letter, number, and special sign. Uh, so require confirmed account, require confirmed email. Uh, false. Uh, options. But where is this? Uh, sign in local password. Password here. Um, requires digit. Okay, the default is true. 
required length is okay require lower key okay require spe required unique charts okay oh false ah okay this is not with false okay uh, what type is this int it says the minimum number of unique characters okay now that's not this is not what I wanted. Like required digit, length, lowercase. Required alphanumeric. Now this this equals to false. I don't want to require this. Okay, so these are the options for signing in, and then identity framework store. Then our DB context right now is this now chess wrinkles DB context. Okay, add resort pages, add server side blazer, and since we are working with authentication, we'll also need this line here. And yet the weather forecast service whatever will delete it at a certain point now what we also want to delete here is uh the weather forecast now we don't delete the weather forecast in the weather forecast service just now because we still have all the other components that will require it um and here we have also these migrations so i guess we'll delete this db context uh to edit delete and we'll delete this entire migrations folder and good that I have deleted it because you see right now I have missed to actually add db context, that's the wrong db context. It's the chess wrinkles db context that we need. And now I guess we should be good to go. Now we can add the migration. EF core, add migration, initial, migration project, startup project, db context, we should be good to go. Let's do that we just got more than 200 views right now from this stream cool i guess that's a record for me on a wednesday stream thank you all very much for contributing towards it if you want to contribute also towards the subscriber goal and if you are not subscribed to the channel already please subscribe uh, new migration created cool so it means that I go in this folder now the problem with is that it ad actually added the migration I know for sure um, because if I open this in file explorer you'll see that afterwards it will actually appear here so if I go in migrations you see that there are the migrations so they were added only that kind of like rider somehow didn't really refresh that now well so we have these migrations so yeah let's me also add this what do we have here this one this one this one And I guess it's so I hate it that Rider kind of like keeps them red if they are not added to source control. It drives me crazy. Cool. So now we have the migration. So if we take a look into the migration, it builds all the tables that it needs for Microsoft ASP .NET Core identity, like ASP .NET users, like this stuff we are kind. Of and of, we will not use it directly because Microsoft Entity Framework Core Identity also has um, uh, has services like user service, password service, user manager, and so on. And we'll just use those services to kind of like log in and do all the stuff. Uh, yeah, it's all the tables that we kind of like needed. Plus, um, probably our table is somewhere in between user roles. We don't need user logins. 
players, yes, that's our table. That's our table. Cool. So yeah, I guess we have the migration, and now that what we can do with these tools is also to tune to tune. Where is it? Entity framework core. Okay. Here we have update database. Once again, here we can choose the migration that we want to update, uh, which is, I guess, the correct one. 244, yeah, it should be the correct one. And yeah, just click OK and the database will be updated with all these tables. So, Okay, Bill succeeded. That's okay. I remember that I forgot to actually write on Twitter about the stream today, so yeah, that's it. Okay, updated. Yeah, we see that the update was successful, so we're kind of okay with that, I guess. Cool, so we are at 7684 subscribers. Hmm, let's see if we can reach 85. So, if anybody is not subscribed from users already, please. Um, Please subscribe and uh, yeah unfortunately some spam messages here uh, sorry for that I can't really do anything about that uh, but I'll just report them and they will go away unfortunately YouTube has a problem with those messages We just removed it. Also, cool. Okay. Yeah, sorry for that, guys. Okay. So, if you just have a few seconds, take a few seconds and write in the chat, Justin, hello, and where you are watching from. Especially those that kind of like didn't say anything till now. Please. Please don't be shy. Really, please don't be shy. Okay, so we have the migration, we have updated the database, so we should be good to go from this point of view. Now we can go back here to the program.cs and there's actually one other thing that I want to do here. And here, actually before we add the DB context, uh, we also want to add DB context factory. That's something that we need in Blazor. Builder.services.add db context factory of chess wrinkles db context. I guess uh, the options here should be the same Okay, I'm, seems I can't get it right. Option. So maybe like this. Okay, so we have added also DB Contest Factory. I guess I will talk about the DB Contest Factory when we use it in this application. Um, if you if you want to kind of like I don't know, uh, maybe get a glimpse of what this idea with the DB Contest Factory is. Uh, I have a Blazor server playlist on the channel. And I have at least three videos on the DB Context Factory and why it's important and why it's wrong to actually use the regular DB Context in, in Blazor applications or in Blazor server applications. Uh, so yeah, you, you might want to check that after the stream. Uh, cool, so I guess that should be also okay. And now we should go towards the identity part and the identity is here 
in areas. So this is actually added by Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity. And here in these pages, let me just, you know, I don't want to copy anything. I have a count and I just have a logout. And in shared, I have this login partial. Okay, cool. So uh, what I would like to do here is add there should be scaffolded item okay and then i want identity okay hello from luxembourg so adrian you are from luxembourg thank you very much for joining really appreciate that Okay, so here what we want to scaffold, like Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity already implements everything here. But the only thing is that we might want to override some of the stuff. And we might want to override the stuff, I guess, here in the login and in the register. And especially in the register, because in the register you, should, you have just username, password, confirm password. And what we need to have is username, first name, I don't know, maybe also description, like... All the information that we need for for the players rob hello from Liz. hello rob thank you for joining once again rob is is a regular watcher of this stream so thank you very much when i say regular i mean i guess he watched every stream in the last month or something like that hello from russia hello hello there as well just just uh, also the others please uh, don't be shy just let me know where where are you watching from kind of like makes me feel the the world like a smaller place like knowing that we have here viewers from different parts of, of the world it's kind of like nice okay so we want to use this one a data context class that's the correct one user class I don't have to specify any because it's the default identity user so i i don't care about that so let's just add this so let me just add this It takes a little bit of time, I see. Let me grab some drink. Yeah, in the meantime, once again, subscribe to the channel if you didn't do that already, of course. I assume most of you who are right now watching are already subscribed. Bill succeeded. Okay, I'm happy that Bill succeeded. And you might also join as a member of Codrinkles, like Boyan did earlier. That would also be highly appreciated. Okay, see, it still takes a little bit of time. Let me check if the playlist is at the end. I guess it's already at the end. And the problem is that this playlist is actually it contains very few songs and then thing is of course I, I cannot use during a stream whatever music I want. So hopefully nobody gets mad at me. Okay, cool. So we have this uh, yeah this file here that I look like we don't really need this. We are already experts. I'm uh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let's delete this. Okay, but what we'll need is this type of stuff. Let me also go here and see what is. So this one, this one, this one, this, this one. But I already have the DB context. Hmm. Ah, it's from the migration, I guess, or? I 
I guess you did some changes here, probably. Uh, this one I need to add. Yeah. I love this music. I listen to something similar when coding. Nice. Well, you see, I'm also use, listening to something similar when coding and not on stream. Uh, so st still the same type of music, but not, not exactly this. <laughs> Um, but good question. What music are you are you usually listening to? It's a question to all of you here, not only to Boyan. What what are you usually listening to? What what's your favorite type of music or artists or something like that? Let me add this commit. Okay. So right now everything is okay. Now if we look a little bit into this register method, like these are ra razor pages by the way. Like uh, razor pages, kind of like they they are. How to explain? Um, they are also provided as an ASP.NET Core way to create uh, web applications, like for applications where you don't really need a lot of stuff going with MVC or with controllers. It might be a little bit of overkill uh, so if you just want to i don't have something like a presentation page or something like that then you can use razor pages razor pages are kind of like uh, very nice because you can have markup like html css and so on like we have here for instance and they also have a code behind file like this one and you see that these all razor pages have by default in the background let's say or in the code behind file basically two methods it, they have uh, okay there, there there's a bunch of properties here uh, but then they have on get and it's basically when uh, a request comes in for this specific page and on post if you post something from this specific page uh, and that's what we'll actually need to kind of like implement but I see we have some errors here I'm not sure exactly where uh, where do we have our errors let me go here to problems Notifications. Consent partial. Cookie okay, consent partial. Got a drop time to nap. Okay, yeah, it's 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 late. Uh, have a good night, boy, and thank you very much for joining. Um, I missed this code wrinkles partial. So this is probably a partial view. It kind of like was not scaffolded, like cookies concerned partial. Um, but let me see if we can find it and scaffold that uh, add where is it scaffolded item where is it there okay also identity also like the music like in games okay By the way, Silvio is also a Code Wrinkles member, as you can see from, from the badge that he has. And he's he's one of the senators, so he's actually on the highest membership level. So thank you very much, Silvio, for uh, for supporting the efforts here and the channel with uh, with your membership. And also, thank you for all the discussions that you got involved into on our Discord server. So if any of you wants to also join us on Discord and, and have their chats and discuss, lot of technical things then um, yeah feel free to join our membership program all membership levels get access to our discord server so there's no there's no problem with that so we have your status messages but we don't have that I don't see that partial anyway status manage now layout Able. 
there. Okay, you know what we'll do? We don't need it. It's just, well, an application for us. We don't care about cookies right now. Interesting things there. Thanks. Thank you for joining. Well, okay, so we did get rid of that. Um... Yeah, yeah, I, I understood that you, that you meant the Discord. I also quite like it. When people come with questions and we get discussions going, that's that's really nice. That's the main reason why I wanted to kind of like have this build this community where we can, uh, well, discuss in a more direct way than just on live streams or through comments on on videos. Uh, okay, so okay, we have we don't have an error anymore. I guess we we did get rid of that. Uh, yeah, we still have some prob. Okay. Mist, okay, pet. Okay, identity is not found. Where is this? It doesn't find it because those items are basically provided directly by the library. So I, I guess it it still will it, it, it will still work, but of course it it cannot find because those will be provided actually at runtime by the library itself. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about that right now. Cool. So we have done this now. Now we have this register, uh, register CSHTML, where we have a lot of logic. Now, one thing that we need to edit here is, and I really want to get rid of all the comments that we have here because it kind of like clutter the code a lot here. Let me just get rid of all the comments. Last song that's uh, spinning like a virus in my mind is uh, Weekend, Biding Lights. I, I will search for the song, I'm, I don't know it, but I will search for it. I'm curious right now, so I'm not sure I don't want this one. And I also don't want this one. And also this one. Cool. Uh, now, what we will do, because this is the input model, so this is the input model for the user registration. You see that here we have like this, uh, well, um, email, password and confirm password. Now, the only other things that we want to have is uh, public, and we'll keep it easy, we'll then just duplicate the markup, uh, public string, uh, I say first name. Basically, the information that we have uh, for use right now, except for the ELO, uh, for the ELO ratings, because those need to be calculated. Actually, we'll set them defaults. Basically, all chess websites uh, they set to defaults, because the the thing about the algorithm of calculating the ELO, it kind of like takes in account how many games you have played. Like for instance, if you start with a default maybe 1,500 and you you play a 1500 elo player and you win you probably will get two or three hundred points uh but if you lose you will actually drop two or three hundred points and the more games you play kind of like it gets more and more balanced and it kind of like narrows down exactly where you are compared to actually the other players uh, it's kind of like nice we'll probably need or we'll come to actually implement the logic for for calculating an elo but surely not today. Today probably I'll I'll just stop at a certain point because it's fairly late in Romania. So what do we need? First name, last name. Let's check our model. Okay, first name, a description. That should be a text area. Um, first name, last name, description. Yeah, that's kind of like all. Once again, spam messages. Sorry. I try to get rid of them because they get to you, I guess. I'm not sure. So, did you see any spam messages that that would be? Please just just let me know. Okay, so first name, last name, and description. That's actually the only things that we need right now. Public string. 
encryption. Get set. Okay. Now the only thing is we need to also come here in the CSHTML and get rid of everything that we don't need. So we have this create new account. So we have this uh, one for email password and then we have this for confirm password. Cool. So we actually just need to duplicate this. Christmas girls are here. Yes. But uh, those comments that they they got away. So they disappeared afterwards when I moderated them. Is, is that correct? Okay. Does Raider have a comment for format? See, it says that I never actually did front-end development in Rider, so not sure, um, but there should be something to format. I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll look afterwards. Uh, so the idea is that we have here the input, uh, input, sp4 input is not the confirm email uh first name okay and it's i don't know maybe bring it here class of uh, form control autocomplete uh new password uh no just first name okay maybe this attribute let's just move it here placeholder first name and let's maybe capitalize it like this uh so yeah that's um that's actually the input and we have the label the label is also for first name this is stuff that's specific to well asp.net core razor engine basically the server rendering mechanism that we have in asp.net core because we can Work with server rendered pages with in in mvc so yeah that's that's how it is or how it works so we have this div with first name um but it's not confirmed password it's first name then the validation it's once again for that uh yeah we should put place some validation there as well that's also something that we need to do, I guess. Uh, okay, but... Uh, why? I'm not sure. Why doesn't it... Uh, if I place here, if I go a tab, it goes directly there. No, I don't want... Okay, let's... Let's not get angry at that. I said for the front end part, rider might not be the best thing, so ah, now it goes. So when I just pressed enter and went to the new line, it, it did the indentation correctly. Aha, uh -huh, the same. Cool. Then we need input for uh, last name. For control auto complete, and uh, it would be last name. Area, placeholder, first name, would be last name. Okay. Then label ASP4 input or last name. And then input dot last name. Okay, something like that. And the same, I guess it would be for... Okay, so that's a div, that's an input, ASP4 description, uh, but autotum, form control, autocomplete, that would actually be a text area. Hmm. Let's your your description label for input name 
description so you're okay with that then it would be description but here we also have to change because it's last name here like that but i'm missing something here so input that's kind of like specifies an input uh, but let me if we go here and say uh, like string length and let's put 500 um, I guess that should automatically probably render it as a text area I hope so at least now what we we'll need is I want this to be required um, okay and I also want this to be required other things I don't really care okay cool so now we have everything and we have also set up the CS HTML part and theoretically right now we should come here and kind of like well look into the code here and try to adapt the code like we don't need email send notification we don't need this redirect uh, yeah we just need to sign in to do uh, here then on the local redirect so we'll have to look into this and we'll have to also come up with our own logic because we'll also have when you register a new identity user you also want to create then a new chess player in a database for that uh, so we'll need to come up with our own logic here and this means that we'll have to implement um, a command and the command handler for that so we'll use mediator so probably that's the point where i guess we'll stop for today because i said it's it's pretty late and uh, probably the next stream will be next wednesday because over the weekend um i will go on a short city break so till tuesday actually but uh yeah worry not i have already recorded videos both for tomorrow and for monday so you are covered even if i'm away visiting videos will still be published on on the channel so yeah cool so guys thank you really very very much for joining today uh it was well a productive stream i would say uh, the first part was probably more exciting for everybody because hey we did get to render a chessboard in a blitz replication that's uh that's a good progress but then to continue the application we kind of like needed to concentrate a little bit on of, on setting up also the backend part and right now we have worked on on the registration we'll have to finalize this during the next stream and when we have a fully functional backend for registering user logging in and yeah also registering players we will just focus on the blazer functionality to kind of like first of all well uh have something similar that we have in liches like that uh, each player that's actually there should kind of like click on on a card say hey i want to play a five plus three rated game and then the application should kind of like look if there are any other players and th then it should pair them together and then each player should be able to kind of like move but for instance if i'm white i should be able to move only when it's my move uh, because in the chessboard that we have right now rendered i can move basically all the pieces uh, and that that's something we want to avoid we want to be able to move only when it's my turn um and yeah we'll start to implement all that logic in in the next stream after we have set up all the login and registration part we will concentrate only on on that and uh, probably then we'll also change the layout of our application and we'll use a dark team from Mad Blazer uh, to kind of like make it similar to what we have on Liches. And uh, yeah, then we'll go uh, one step at a time, we'll create the cards, we'll, yeah, we'll try to implement the functionality. And I guess that would be fairly interesting because we'll probably need signal R. Like when a player moves, the fact that a player moves should actually come back somehow to our server kind of like uh, update a new fan and kind of like do things like that so probably we need si uh, signal R for that it, it i guess it would be a very interesting project that will keep us busy for i guess at least three or four weeks uh, and then we'll see probably then we'll move to the react part that i promised to everybody yeah okay good once again uh if there is anybody of you who uh is not already a subscriber please subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever there is new content published here so that you don't miss anything 
if you are interested to find out more about Blazor server, what we are using here, uh, look in the playlist on the channel. I have a playlist that's dedicated only to Blazor server. So you might want to check that out because there is, from my point of view, very, very important stuff there, like things that usually are done wrong in Blazor server projects because a Blazor is a little bit different than a regular MVC application or the, reg or the regular Blazor web assembly. Uh, because the, the, the programming model in Blazor is very similar in certain aspects to what we have in desktop applications. And this comes with a lot of problems. So if you want to kind of like prepare yourself a little bit for the next streams, go to the uh, Blazor server playlist and you have plenty of videos there that kind of like in, um, explain in depth a lot of the functionalities there. And basically uh, those things that I explained in these videos, the, these are also things that I usually, uh, or this year and also next year probably I, I will talk about them at, at conferences. Like they are really deep and really uh, practical, let's say. And they will make sure that if you need to do a Blazor application, you will know exactly, okay, what or where to be very careful, let's say. Cool. This being said, once again, thank you really very, very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I wish you a great evening or a great day, depending on which time zone you are. And uh, let's keep in touch and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see us next week. Have a great day. Bye.